I created a factory example smart contract that is going to show you how a factory contract works and how is it creating other contracts by using the create to upcode. First, I declared a mockup contract for a pair where we have an address of the token 0, token 1 and an address for the factory. The factory is the contract that will create this pair contract. And you can see that this is set in the constructor by being the message sender. After this contract is created using create2, then the function initialize is called by the factory smart contract at the time of deployment, which will set up the tokens. The factory contract has an event pair created. I created a function that generates random addresses, so we don't have to go on the internet and search for token addresses by ourselves. The get address function is a function that will get the address of a contract before it is even deployed. The deploy create to function is the function that will deploy the contract using create to and generate salt is a function that will generate a salt based on the tokens that the user provided for the pair. This is the same process that PancakeSwap is following so you can see that for the salt they are hashing the token 0 and token 1 arguments. Let's go into the first function. The first function generate random address will take in a num, so a uint value argument, and it is a pure function that returns an address. We use the num, which is a value that we provide, and a static string random token address to create a byte 32 hash. After that, from this hash, we create an address and we return it. So an address is basically a hash, but the address is made of the last 20 bytes of the hash. So this is what this is doing, it's getting the last 20 bytes of the hash. The function get address takes in two token addresses and the salt. This function is public view and we return an address. First of all, we have to get the bytecode of the pair contract. So the pair that we are going to deploy using create 2 we get its bytecode. After we get the bytecode, we declare a byte32 hash. This will be a hash of the following arguments. So we encode a bytes10xff. This is a hexadecimal number. It has the value of one byte. It's a static thing that you give in order to get these hashes. After that, we provide the address of this contract, the salt and the kechak256 of the bytecode. All these things combined and hashed will be used to calculate the address of the smart contract that will contain these two tokens. So you see that the last line of code here is returning the hash casted to uint256 and then to uint160 and then to address. And this is doing the same thing that we did here. So it's returning the last 20 bytes of the hash which will be the contract address. So this is how you get the address of a pair contract that is not even deployed yet. Because if you know the tokens and the salt, you can get the address of the contract. Let's get into the deploy create function. So this function will create a smart contract that will be dependent on the user input, right? So the user input will be the token 0 and the token 1. This byte 32 salt will be generated inside the smart contract. What will be given by the user will be these two token addresses. So first of all, we are going to get the bytecode of the pair smart contract. Then we are going to declare a pair address. And then using assembly, we are going to create the pair using create2. Create2 takes in four arguments and it was introduced in the EIP1014 by Vitalik and if you want you can check this out. So you see that the create2 has four arguments V, P and S. It deploys a contract at an address that is determined by the user control input and not dependent on any state on the blockchain. This create2 allows developers to calculate the address of a contract before it is deployed. So this is what we are going to do with this function. The arguments are V, which is the amount of ETH to send. So you can send ETH when you are creating a contract. P, which is the pointer to start of code in memory. N, which is the size of the code. And S, which is the salt. So here for our create2 we are providing 0 as the first argument, so we are not sending any ETH. The P, so the pointer to start of code in memory, will be this add bytecode and 32, which means that first 32 bytes will store the size of the code, and then the code starts after skipping those 32 bytes. 
This will load the bytecode of our smart contract, of our pair smart contract in order to deploy it. And then the salt, which is an arbitrary value provided by the sender. After that, it checks that the pair code size is zero. And if it is, it will revert with a zero zero. After the pair is created, the pair doesn't have the tokens set already it's true that the tokens were provided but they were provided just to calculate the address and not to initialize the tokens inside the smart contract what will initialize the tokens is this call to the pair smart contract with the initialize function which is this one that will set up the tokens and check if the message sender is the factory contract and then it will emit a pair created event you can see that this is exactly what PancakeSwap does to create the pair contract. So it gets the bytecode, then it calculates a salt based on the tokens, then using assembly it creates the pair using create2 and it gives the arguments. And they also don't send any ETH when they create a pair. After the pair is created they call the function initialize to set up the tokens and then the rest of the code. So the generate salt function is simply hashing the tokens and then returning the hash. Let's now deploy a factory example contract and run the functions. So the contract has been deployed on the JavaScript VM and we have our functions right here. What we need to do first is have the token addresses. So we need to generate two token addresses. We can do that by using the generate random address. We will give one as the first argument and it generates an address. And let's give this address as the first argument in the get address function. Then we will generate another address, give it as the token one. And then we also need the salt. So we are going to generate a salt. The salt it's determined by the tokens so we need to give the tokens as arguments and the salt is generated we paste it here and we call the function so you see that for these two tokens and this salt we got an address so now we are going to create the pair with these two tokens and this salt and we are already know the address of the contract that is going to be deployed so let's see if the address of the contract that we are going to create is equal to this one let's provide the token addresses and the salt and we are going to deploy so the pair contract has been deployed let me do a simple search you can see here the address this is the event the pair created event that got emitted after deploying and the first value in the event is the address of the pair and you see that the address of the pair is exactly the same as the address that we got here so this means that the new contract that got deployed has this address what we can do now is get this address switch up to the pair contract and load up the pair contract at this address you can see that we got a contract and let's see which contract is the factory the factory contract has this address which we can see that it's mentioned here so this is exactly what we wanted to do so the factory contract that deployed this pair contract is our factory contract the token 0 is the token that we initialized and the token 1 is the token that we initialized by this line of code I will now try to call the function initialize from this account so not from the factory contract so let me generate another address so I call the function initialize from this account and I got an error that is saying pancake forbidden if we search for this error we find it here and we see that it requires that the message sender that calls this function is only the factory contract so only the factory contract can call this function 